Traffic is a nightmare, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in it. But when you're not in it, and you can see it, it's rather entertaining, isn't it? <laughs> when you're on the motorway and you have no traffic on your side, you're weaving in and out of lanes. <laughs> I'm loving my side. And then people aren't moving on the other side. You'd like to think that maybe you feel sorry for them, but you don't. It's almost like, darling, wake up! These people are fucked. <laughs> what have I missed? Nobody's moved for about five miles now. <laughs> Something must have happened. Something terrible must have happened. Look, it's going all the way down there. It's the worst I've ever seen. Something must have happened. Did you see anything happen? I haven't seen anything happen, but something must have happened. <laughs> you actually hope it lasts your entire journey. <laughs> and then finally, regrettably, you reach the end of the traffic and you see people joining at the back and I look at them. They have no idea. <laughs> Even for miles, you see people driving at like 80 miles an hour. Enjoy that while it lasts. It won't last. <laughs> You packed an overnight bag, and then you're in traffic. There's nothing worse than when you're in traffic. When you're in traffic on the motorway and you sit there in traffic because you might be there forever. You have no idea. You have like 80 miles to go. We're not moving. And there will always come a time when man will get out of the car. <laughs> this is the cutoff point when man goes, I'm going to take a look, and he will get out of the car on the motorway. <laughs> in the history of getting out of the car, no man has ever seen anything. <laughs> you just get back into the car, slam the door. Do you see anything? No. <laughs> And then you're free. You want to drive freely on the motorway. Sometimes there are police cars on the motorway and they go 70 and you realise this is this, I'm fucked, I have to go 70 now. And everyone is going 70 next to the police car. And you come to the conclusion you will do 71 and you slowly... <laughs> police cars there. There's nothing more exciting than when you overtake at 71. Don't look, you just you can't act quite nonchalant. Here we are. <laughs> Can he see me? He can't see me. Go! <laughs> You know what winds me up? Farm traffic. Tractors should not be on the road, OK? They are designed for fields. Look at them with their huge, big wheels, and they bounce around in the country on the roads going five miles an hour, right in your face, normally adjacent to a field. You have the wheels to drive on the field. Go in there, let me get on with my life. When you're ploughing, I don't drive in front of you at half a mile an hour. There's nothing more to... You have to sit behind the tractor and wait to go into the other lane, the death lane, all right? Where there are cars coming in the opposite direction. <laughs> Nobody ever wants to be driving into oncoming traffic. And you just sit there with the tractor bouncing around. He's loving it. You can see he's bouncing around. Go on, make your move. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, make your... This thing actually does 70 mile an hour. Just fucking with you, you urban bastard. <laughs> and you, put, you wait for the straight. You don't mess around with the bends or the hills. Wait for the straight, and then you have a little look, look, a little look, and then you edge back in because you realise death is coming. I could have died. <laughs> but the pressure builds. You know you have to do it because other people will start queuing behind you. Traffic will fall. And you can see men in your rearview mirror just staring at you. Make your move, my friend. <laughs> We're all depending on you. You could have gone at the last straight. You pussy down. We all saw it embarrassing. <laughs> And you keep saying, look, I'm trying, but I don't want to die. <laughs> and then after a period of time, not the car behind you, or even the car behind the car behind you, or even the car behind the car behind the car behind you, but some asshole right at the back. <laughs> Nobody's even seen this guy yet. He's normally in some kind of black BMW X5. <laughs> He'll come out and take all of you. <laughs> and nobody can believe it's happening. Everyone in the queue are like, we're being raped of our masculinity. <laughs> How could this happen? And you look into the distance to see, is there a car coming? And you can't help but think, as one, die. <laughs> Sometimes they realise they've messed up and they try to get back in later in the day. And we don't let them. <laughs> You've made your decision. Accept your fate, prick! <laughs> I hate it when you're driving behind somebody and they, they, you know, they're swerving. Or the lights go green and they don't react. And you conclude, there's an idiot in that car. <laughs> You'll start discussing it with other people in your car. Have you seen the idiot? Oh, complete idiot. And then you think, let's go, let's go past the idiot. Let's see what the idiot looks like. <laughs> it's very rare in life you can see a genuine idiot human. And you wait for your first opportunity to overtake the idiot. 
and you can feel your neck muscles pulling. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> A whole car full of people in unison. Even babies in their car seats. Who is phoning radio stations to warn of traffic jams? Who's doing that? Do we trust these people? <laughs> you listen to the travel news and they used to just tell you the travel news. Now you've got people calling up with their own little updates. We just had a call from Barry. He says it's chock a block on the North Circular at Wembley. <laughs> Thanks for your call, Barry. If anybody else has any travel news, call our travel hotline. <laughs> Who the fuck is Barry? <laughs> Who in their right mind gets stuck in traffic and just goes, quick, get me the phone. I must warn the others. <laughs> Hello, is that the radio? It's Barry. <laughs> it's too late for me. <laughs> Save as many as you can. Please hurry, I'm running out of battery. My favorite button in the car, and again, I'll speak for all of us when I say this, I think is the hazard warning lights. There's something very exciting about that little red triangle in the corner when you push it. When you become a hazard, you think, oh, I'm a hazard. You feel quite excited. I must warn everybody that I'm a hazard now. I've broken down. You put it, it starts flashing in the car and, and, and everything's working. All the, all the indicators, <laughs> we're a hazard. Yes, I've done the right thing. I've done the right thing. But we've interpreted the hazard in other times of our life. A fun one is on the motorway when you hit traffic, you know? Suddenly you're going 70, 80 miles an hour, then suddenly there's traffic, you have to slow down. <gasps> that was dangerous. I went from high speed to nothing. But your thought is no longer with yourself. Your thought is with everybody behind you. I must warn them. I must warn them of the breaking danger that lies ahead. And I will use my hazard warning. Like, can you see me? Can you see that you must slow down? You're looking in your rearview mirror. Have you clocked me yet, my friend? And it's a lovely moment. They're like, I see you, and I shall warn the one behind. I'm warning. You can even feel quite excited when you see it in the distance. <gasps> We're working as a team. I'm coming. Also, to thank people, that's a big thank you, isn't it? That's the biggest thank you. Because sometimes you just acknowledge them with your hand, you know, you flash if they're in front of you to thank them. Because letting people in in traffic is a big part. Once you've decided to stop your life to let somebody in, you see them edging, they're edging, and like, shall I, shall I? You contemplate it. Shall I? Yes, I will, I will. To, to allow the free flow of traffic, I will stop my life. Yes, you, you should come in. You can go first, go on, off you go. Yes, I'm a very generous person. Yeah. Only one, only one. There's always some sneaky, there's a sneaky one that goes, oh, I might, I might tag in the crowd. No, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. No tagging in, my friend. I am generous to tune off one vehicle. <laughs> and, there you go. and then you wait to be thanked. You're, you're burning a hole in their head. <laughs> I stopped my life for this. I'm expecting some form of gratitude. <laughs> Sometimes it never comes. I can't believe it. I regret my decision. I should never have let that rude person in. <laughs> Try to overtake them just to look at them. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Rude person. But the hazard thank you is the biggest thank you. When somebody lets you in, and you come in, and they let you in, and you can, you can feel them burning a hole in your head, waiting for gratitude. And you're like, you think I'm not grateful. You think I'm not grateful. But I am grateful. <laughs> just a little delay. 